Good morning, folks. It is Sunday morning in cold, blustery New England. Uh, it's probably like 10 degrees out, and they're talking about more snow. So it's, it's very fun. Uh, I managed to, as a public service announcement, don't keep playing when your hand starts to hurt. Uh, this is my fretting hand, and I kind of ignored it when it was starting to ache and, and cramp up and kept going, and then I did a workout and, and so on. And now, for the last day and a half, I basically can't play because it hurts. Uh, so when your body tells you to stop, stop. Um, I mean, obviously, it's just it's just cramped up muscles, and it'll it'll be fine in a day or so. But as I've mentioned, I'm an IT guy, and I sit there and I, I type half the day. So it's going to be interesting at work tomorrow. Uh, anyway, that is not the point of the video. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Like a lot of people who play at home, and particularly in either older houses or houses where things aren't isolated real tightly between uh, appliances and lighting systems and outlets. I have power that is noisy. Uh, it doesn't fluctuate a whole lot, it's just noisy. It's one of the reasons I've used a lot of digital. Um, one of the first things I ran into when I had my first amp for guitar here was a little Orange Crush 12. And while this is a solid state amp, it isn't digital in the sense that it, it's not doing any processing. It's not taking your, your power and running it through anything that is really cleaning that up. <clears throat> uh, in contrast, you have something like the Helix or Bias FX. Your power is just running a computer uh, and, and the computer doesn't care what the power looks like as long as it's good enough. So yeah, I mean, there's some effect on your outbound sound uh, because there is a little amp in there. But I mean, it's such a low power amp that I mean, you're basically just talking a line line output. Um, that's that's not noticeable. I notice it in my PA speaker. Uh, I definitely can't get as high as I should before it starts to hiss. And where I really noticed it in an annoying way is my orange micro dark, because you turn that on, and you get the gain and the volume to anything you'd want to use. I mean, I forget discussions of home volume and bedroom volume versus, you know, a, a, a plain space that you can crank it up. I'm talking, you get past 60 decibels. You get past this volume. And it's in the speaker. Now, the minute you start playing, it's, it's background. It, you, you barely notice it. Certainly, I mean, if you turn up any kind of high gain noise, what's coming through your, your guitar and everything is doing way more than that. But it's annoying. I, I play a lot of clean. Uh, I, I don't see the point in this day and age of having noise in my signal chain that I didn't put there or isn't unavoidable from my equipment. Um, obviously, certain pieces of equipment just by the nature of what they're doing will introduce some noise into a otherwise zeroed signal. I mean, my guitar is not making any noise, volume's off, but they they make some. That's fine. Uh, that, that's the price of doing business. And I went shopping. And I mean, I'm sure we've all done this at some point. You, you have an idea and you're like, okay, it has to exist. Somebody has to make this. It's too obvious not to. Well, it does exist. Uh, EFI reducing power strips not expensive. The trick is there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of bullshit. And read some articles, read some reviews. People talked about how some of the cheaper ones actually introduced more noise. Uh, they blocked the EFI coming in, but they were just so lousy <laughs> that they actually created more noise. Uh, so I went with a brand I've used. Uh, I went with a brand I've trusted for a while. And if I don't manage to reverse this, this is a trip light unit. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm using the forward-facing camera on my, on my phone. So hopefully in studio, in, in the software, I'll flip this around and you'll be able to read this. But otherwise, this is a protected seven outlet 
three are transformer blocks, meaning they're they're sideways or they're separated. Uh, this actually has two outlets. Let's see, right here, and on the other side, and then this guy is split off a little bit, and way more protection. Uh, 2,160 joules of protection as opposed to some of the cheaper units and even some of the more expensive but not not really IT related have much lower protection. Uh, UL listed for people who care. Uh, if you're in a commercial environment that's important. Your insurance will pitch a fit if it's not UL listed. Uh, not that anybody ever tells them or looks but you know in the event of an actual fire your insurance company will notice. Uh, they'll go digging, trust me, because they don't want to pay. So, otherwise, pretty typical power strip. Uh, I, I certainly, I think I paid eighteen dollars. I have to go look, but I mean, it it was not out of line for a good power strip. Um, I I've seen eight dollar ones. I've seen hundred dollar ones. They have the same number of outlets, roughly the same protection level. This one. And, and a huge chunk of the Trip Light product line specifically discusses the EFI protection as a focus. It's something they care about. Don't get me wrong, APC, a bunch of other companies make the same thing. Uh, I actually just bought a big APC one for a new unit at work. But APC doesn't talk about the EFI nearly the same way. They some of their units are very good at it. Some of their units are, eh, within these limits, we're okay. They assume that whatever you're using is taking care of that for you. Uh, that it's not critical. Because in most equipment, it's not. Uh, the sad truth is, the modern world is digital. <laughs> and it doesn't care. Uh, digital equipment really doesn't care about the noise as long as it's within certain parameters. Analog... Noise equals noise. Uh, you know, signal noise is signal noise. And from what I found, this particular trip light was the best for our purposes. Uh, now, certainly, if you spend more money, you can get better. Um, I don't remember what who made it, uh, but if you go to Guitar Center, if you go to a Sweetwater, there are a couple units that are noise isolating. They are very rugged, they are tough, they are take it to a gig, take it on a, a tour. They start at 50 bucks and go up. And they are heavy. And this is this is heavy duty commercial equipment. Is that worth it? I don't know, it had two outlets. <laughs> okay, how many of them do I need? Uh, yeah, I could take that and I could run something like this off of it. Uh, and yes, the, the, as long as you're not using something that introduces noise after it's EFI protection, they, they stack. Uh, so that would be very quiet. And I let's just say it'll happen. Uh, I'm enough of a, a geek that that will happen. But thought I'd share that. I thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, I got it on Amazon. It has a very long cord. It's a seven foot cord with a right angle plug, uh, angled as well. So it's, it's flush to the wall and then coming off at an angle so that it's out of the way. Can't, can't recommend it enough. It quieted my micro dark right down. It's awesome. Give it a try. Keep playing. Have fun. Stay safe all.